The internet, much like beer, has been described as both the cause of and solution to some of life's biggest problems. We can find any fact in the world. Thank you very much, internet, but we can't seem to agree on those facts. We can connect with anyone, anywhere. That's great. Except very often the person right next to us. And then there are the effects of social media and now the risks of artificial intelligence. And I can't be the only one who's wondering, is it getting better out there or is it getting worse? Which is why I recently sat down with three computer scientists who helped build the original internet how do they think it's all turned out? Here's what they said. If you've ever wondered about, I don't know, the indoor land speed record or the weight of the Earth, you could, of course, find an answer almost instantly. And you can thank these guys. Uh, do you accept the mantle of founding fathers of the internet? Well, we're three. No, 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 me. <laughs> Humble as they are, the world as we know it would not exist without the work of people like Vint Cerf, Steve Crocker, and Bob Kahn. Yeah. One of the big issues about the internet is that most people don't really have a good idea of what it is. They know because they helped develop the technologies and the software to send data from computer to computer to the whole wide world. Well, I think for a lot of people, the internet is a kind of magic. It's a sort of spirit in the air that brings me information. <laughs> it's not even a physical thing. The idea that it would go back to any kind of physical wiring connecting this node and that node. I don't think the internet is a physical thing. I think it's the implementation of the internet protocols that's physical. Bob's taking an interesting philosophical view of this. <laughs> there are descriptions of how the thing is supposed to work and you have to implement those descriptions in things called computers and routers and things like that. It's the description of how it's supposed to work that's important. So you can keep building new things to work in new ways to make internet even more interesting. That's what allowed their early networks to blossom into a whole universe of interconnected laptops and smartphones and speakers and headsets, all of which changed the way we, and not for nothing, how they get things done. I will look up recipes, I will, will listen to music. Whenever I sit in front of a screen and do a Google search and I actually get something back, it's astonishing. It is when astonishing. When you think about all the stuff that had to work for that to happen. These days, of course, a lot of what's happening on the internet is a good time. This was not actually in the program plan. <laughs> so wow. what was in the program plan? <laughs> Resource sharing, connecting computers together, connecting people together to do research. When did humans start doing what humans do, which is use it for fun, for friendship? Right at the very beginning. Five o'clock that night? <laughs> yeah. But it all actually started as a tool for the U.S. military. Here's a photograph of him in his military uniform. A major in the U.S. Air Force, Christine Hawney Dare Bryan's father, Joseph, worked with some of those founders to develop a predecessor to the Internet called the ARPANET. We always had this technology that my dad would kind of wheel it in and then show it to my mom, and no one really knew what it was. As her father got older, Christine, who's an editor at Inc. Magazine, decided to record his stories, building a podcast all about the founders of the Internet. And for the title, picking a word her father once used to describe some of those founders. He called them these computer freaks. He didn't want these computer freaks coming on and kind of um, hurting or harming his beloved ARPANET. And instead, we had something that was being used for, you know, socializing and finding communities. So he was a purist. Yes. So your father would not have been a fan of Amazon.com deliveries at, at his door. Oh, he loves Amazon now. Like, how do you? <laughs> but that's good. Well, that's the. Those are the computer freaks, Dad. Right. Come on. <laughs> net, net, net. Do you feel like the internet is a good? Yes, unquestionably, yes. absolutely. But for all the ways their work has improved our lives, and there are a lot of them, it's also introduced some challenges for privacy and for personal connection. There's a lot of good, but there's also potential for bad. Yeah, well, it starts to show up, uh, especially in social networking. It was pretty clear early on that anybody who wanted to say something could say whatever they wanted to say. Uh, and misinformation and disinformation propagation, that has become much more prominent, I would say, in the last decade. 
This is one analogy that I've used from time to time is suppose I offer you a technology which is absolutely going to revolutionize transportation. It's going to bring people together. And uh, it only has a small downside that we're going to kill 50,000 people a year. Could you anticipate you're going to need traffic signals and policemen and you're going to have you know, bank robbers running? You know? But obviously, the creation of, of automobiles, uh, j just to pick a particular technology, has been absolutely revolutionary. But does regret play a role ever when you see some of the ills of the internet? Never for no. me. I, 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 I don't uh, feel any regret. When people say, well, what about all the bad stuff that people do using the internet? My response is, that's their responsibility. That's not my responsibility. Mm -hmm. I just hope that something like the internet will continue to be part of the society that we live in and that maybe some, you know, in some distant time, somebody will remember I had a tiny role to play in it. You should ask God if he has any regret for <laughs> creating humankind because yeah. of all the bad things that people do. <laughs> and let me know the answer when you find out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did you find out? <laughs> not yet. Yeah, yeah, not yet. yet. Our booking team is on it. Uh, we'll try to get an answer soon. <laughs> I love talking it's to those guys. Yeah, yeah, because you know you invent something or the basis for something, and then it becomes all these other things. And do you have any? You know, you must have some thoughts about where it's gone. And clearly, they're a little conflicted, but also. Net, very net, net. Proud. They're very proud. very proud. Yeah, they want to be remembered for what they I like done. when he said, when I Google a recipe or something and it comes out, I'm, I'm, I'm astonished. <laughs> I know. I also love that, that. Yeah. They, the first uh, internet connected computers, five o'clock that night, people start, you know, joking around, you know, lying to each other, playing games, like all yeah. the stuff that we now see as a problem began right away. Yeah, they seem like proud grandfathers. You yeah. know, they birthed something and that has turned into something else. And yeah. we're all using it. And we're yeah, all, we're using, all it. using it. You're right about that. Appreciate it.